Good morning. Welcome to God Time. This morning we're continuing the story of us, the story of his story, right? Uh, those things that are just of God. The 21 stories that define the Bible, that help us to see the scarlet thread that runs throughout it. Yesterday, we talked about creation and the things we learned about God, that he created everything. Well, today, I want to tell you the story about the separation, the fall, right? So continuing from yesterday's story, if you haven't seen it yet, go back and, and uh, watch that. One day, a clever serpent came to Eve and asked her, Did God really say you can't eat any of the fruit of the garden? Eve told him, No, we can eat from any tree in the garden. It's only the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that we're not allowed to eat from or even touch, or we will die. Trying to trick Eve, the serpent says, You won't die. God knows that as soon as you eat the fruit, your eyes will be opened. You'll become just like him. You'll know everything, both good and evil. Eve, believing the serpent, looked at the delicious fruit and thought, Hmm, we'll know everything. And then she took some of the fruit, and she ate it. And she also gave some to Adam, who was with her, and he ate it. Instantly their eyes were open, and they became filled with shame and fear, and they tied fig leaves together to cover up their nakedness. Later that day, Adam and Eve heard God walking in the garden, so they hid in some bushes. God called to them, Where are you? Adam answered, I heard you coming, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. God answered, why are you ashamed of being naked? Did you eat the fruit I told you not to eat? Adam said, It was the woman you gave me. She handed me the fruit. Then God said to Eve, How could you do this? Eve replied, The serpent tricked me into eating the fruit. So God said to the serpent, Because you've done this, you and your kind will crawl on your bellies and eat dust the rest of your lives. You will be the enemy of women and their sons. As you bite his heels, he will step on your head. God's heart was also broken because of Adam and Eve's disobedience. God always does what is right and true. He could not ignore what they'd done. So God punished Adam and Eve by throwing them out of the garden. Outside of his care and protection, no longer following God's ways, Adam and Eve were now subject to sickness, pain, and even death. God told them, The way you've chosen to live will now bring you great struggles. Women will now have sharp pains while giving birth. Men will have to work hard to and sweat just to produce a little food from the ground. And you'll both fight to control your relationship. And then you'll return to the ground from which I created you. And even though God punished Adam and Eve, he didn't stop loving them. He even killed an animal and created clothing for them out of animal skins. And from this point on, God stationed mighty angels at the entrance of the garden. He put a flaming sword that flashed back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. And humans would no longer be able to eat from the tree of life and live forever. Now, Let's talk for a minute. What do we know about the serpent? And, and what did he try to do? Well, here's what the serpent did. He distorted what God had said about eating fruit from the other trees. And then he lied by telling Eve that the, through, the fruit would make her like God. Right? Back, where have we seen this before? I mean, here, here's Satan who fell from heaven, who wanted to be like God. Well, he was the same temptation that he was wanting. He put us on top of her. So, so this serpent was the fallen one, Satan, right? Now, next question. Why was it a bad idea for, eat, for them to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Well, for one thing, there were consequences for breaking God's trust. 
And they now have the responsibility of knowing about and dealing with evil in their own strength. See, God was willing to take all of the burden of evil upon himself, but they chose that they wanted to be, in a sense, like God. And God could deal with it, but they didn't have the strength to. Right? So the next question. What did Adam and Eve do wrong? What were the consequences? Well, they disobeyed God, the one who loved them. I mean, they, they severed that relationship. That was the consequence. They had the immediate consequence of now having to work hard in, it, in childbirth where it wouldn't have been painful. Now it was painful, sharp pains in childbirth. The ground, the very earth was cursed because of their decisions. And, and and so they had immediate consequences and they had future consequences. But then think about this. Their relationship was also affected by their disobedience. Now, one of the struggles was they would have strife in their relationship. They would struggle to make their relationship work, right? So why do you think, you know, God requires consequences for sin and rebellion. You say, oh, God didn't have to do that. Well, he did. See, God is perfect, and he's holy. And his perfect goodness and fairness, God will never allow evil to remain in his presence. His holiness requires that sin be punished. So that's why, and, and so what do we learn about humans in this story, right? Well, this is true of us, not just of Adam and Eve. This is true of us. Humans can be deceived into believing wrong things. And just because something sounds good doesn't mean that it is good. But, but there's a second thing we learn about humans here, about you and me. It's the story of us. Humans can choose God's ways or they can choose their own ways. There's another thing I see here, and it's this. Humans tend to hide and blame when faced with sin. Well, do you think that God gave up on Adam and Eve? I mean, think about it. No. No. He didn't give up on them. Yeah, there was a punishment. But he didn't give up. Let's go on and we'll look at it. So, what do we learn about God in this story? Just like the last story, not only is God all powerful and did he create all things, he knows all things. Whenever Adam and Eve had eaten from the tree, God knew it, right? The second thing we learn about God is that God will never allow evil to remain in his presence. The third thing is that God judged each of the characters in the story. He cast Adam and Eve out of the garden and away from his presence. He promised one who would come to kill the snake. Remember, he said, the woman's, you will snap at the seed of, at the woman's heel, but her seed, her son, will crush your head. That's the first prophecy we have in the Bible concerning Jesus Christ. Here's something else we learned. God is the source of all grace. He didn't destroy Adam and Eve. He even made clothing, the first sacrifice in the Bible, to cover the guilt of our sin, was made by God himself. So, the, 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 the last question is, how are we like Adam and Eve? How are we different from them? Today, I want you to consider this story, consider the creation story yesterday and consider today's story. And, and I want you to think about what ways are you like Adam and Eve? And in what ways are you different? Well, I'm so glad you could join me for God time this morning. Let me pray for you. And then we'll get about our day. Father, forgive us whenever we choose our ways over your ways. And thank you, God, for being willing to cover any sin that we uncover. And thank you, Father, that like you did with Adam and Eve, 
you also uncover any sin that we try to cover up so that we don't have to be separated from you. Jesus came so that separation would not have to be permanent. Thank you for your love and for not giving up on us. In Jesus' name, amen. As you go about your day today, I'm going to ask you to do a couple of things. One, love God. Love others. And by all means, go be salt and light. God bless.